recipe for my boys dresser. I have a nine year old and a six year old boy. They do underwear, pajamas, shirts, socks, and pants. And then that'll change out for the season. So the bottom will be shorts during the summer. Uh, and then the middle part will be more just short sleeves, not short sleeves and long sleeves for the colder time of the year. And pajamas and underwear is always the same. The problem is nowadays, I have charged my children with putting away their own clothes. This is a chore that they are learning to do. And they just can't close their drawers anymore. The, there's just stuff too much. The problem is simply too much. An issue also is that they don't fold when they put away. I don't care. That's fine with me. If that's how they put away their clothes, that's their business. It really doesn't matter to me if they fold their clothes. However, they have so many choices that it's hard for them to put their clothes away. And this is what made me think of the boundary method of decluttering, that you use, you define a space, a boundary, a drawer, a basket, a bin, a shelf. You define a boundary for a category. This is my son's pants. So defining the bound, the drawer as the boundary, I need to declutter until that boundary works. He might have some clothes in here that are probably too small. We're coming up to summertime anyway, so we're gonna be switching out for shorts. So the first thing I wanna do is just check what he even needs in here and what even fits. See, that's too small. These are six sevens, these are too small. So they can go into my seasonal storage bin in the boys' closet for my younger son. These are eights, these probably fit him okay. I'm gonna do sort of like a, I know these fit. I'm gonna do sort of like a partial fold. These aren't even his. When I find a pair of pants that works for them, I just buy them in bulk. So he's got <laughs> three of these pants and then these pants. He's still a little like, can't be managed by him. If I do this, it works okay. So this came out and it's not gonna be decluttered from my house, but it is going to be saved from a younger son. So it does come out of the drawer. It is decluttered from the boundary. The boundary of method of decluttering really helps you with those categories that tend to get messy. So kids clothes, toys, playroom, board games, those kinds of things get messy in our house and that's okay because we have kids in a family and we use those things. Uh, having less definitely makes it easier to tidy up, but also defining boundaries for things helps make sure that we have the right amount of stuff for the category. Using reverse decluttering, I can say, what do I want to keep first? So I chose all the ones I want to keep, the ones that weren't selected, why weren't they selected, what needs to happen with them? And that then makes this space easier, makes the boundary work. Now shirts are just, this is a mess. So the first thing I do with a boundary method is I take everything out of the boundary. So in here we have a couple of pairs of socks, some Legos, Okay, now the boundary is done. If I need to, I'll clean it out. I don't need to on this occasion. And then I decide what to keep first. It's gonna make a pile right in front of me of the things I know fit him and he wears and he likes. As I go, I know he doesn't like this one. The other thing this does is affords me a chance to make sure that the clothes he has are in pretty decent enough shape that he can you know, wear outside of the house in public in front of people. Because a lot of times with my oldest, he uses his shirt as a napkin and uh, the shirts get, they get ruined. So all of these shirts, except for one, still work for him. And I do his laundry, the boys, I usually do it together about once a week um, or, or separately once a week, depending on how they went through their clothes. This makes this a little bit easier for him to get stuck in and out and close down. Of course, the drawer's broken. That doesn't help either. So first, I open all of my drawers. Then I dump it all in. Oops. Just do it the way you normally do it. All hanging out and stuff. That's okay. Then I get the shirts. Not very many. Then final talk. Shove those in there. 
I know nothing in there needs to be decluttered. So same thing up here. I know nothing needs to be decluttered from that drawer. Pajamas and underwear still fit. Now these are my six-year-old shirts. Like really? Okay. First step in reverse cluttering is to decide what to keep. And as I go, if I 100% know that we're done with it, like this is too small, he doesn't like this one, and I'm making a donate pile. And I have a bin in my laundry room that is for donation. And anything that we come across that doesn't fit, my daughter will often have something she just, she doesn't wanna wear anymore. She can pop that in the declutter bin in the laundry room or give it to me to do. So what I'm doing now, these are all, well, these are pajama shirts. It's just organizing it for him. This is too small. This is probably too small too, isn't it? Yep. Some things I know he hasn't worn recently just by looking at these things, because I'm the one that does, this is my daughter's. I know it just doesn't fit him anymore. This one still fits. This one still fits. This is a pajama shirt. Okay. All right, he had quite a bit that didn't fit him anymore. I do this like once or twice a year. I go through and just see what's what in their clothes files and get rid of whatever they need to do. Well, my, with my daughter, she's eight. She goes through that process with me and she needs a lot of help going through it. She does not want me making those decisions for her. So I don't. Um, when she has trouble putting her clothes away, I just make sure that I'm there to help her. We came up with a labeling system for her that she can change out and she seems to really like that. Okay, so these are the shirts, some long sleeves and some short sleeves. Now that is way, way better. Look out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine shirts that he doesn't wear. And I know he doesn't wear because I don't wash them. They just keep getting moved around in the drawer that we're cluttering that boundary and making it hard for him to get clothes and get dressed. Pants are really easy for my six year old because he only has like five pairs of pants. So uh, they all fit and they're not really bothering his drawer or making it hard for him. To get dressed all right this is going to go into my donate bin in the laundry and then this is going to go in the seasonal bin for the boys uh for my younger to youngest to wear later these are all stickers that are stuck on here so the boundary method can help you live with less and make some quicker decisions when you have designated a specific area the boys are very simple when it comes to their clothes in my house they don't care they don't shop for it they do not care what they wear so that makes it easy for me to take care of and to figure out what they actually just need in their drawers. Laundry is all caught up, so I know exactly what is in here is what they have besides what they're wearing right now. And if they're wearing it right now, that means they're wearing it and it can get washed and put into the rotation. So I've decluttered all of this from the kids' drawers and folding it a little bit nicer also helped a little bit too. Okay. Uh, I'll show you my declutter basket, my donate basket in the laundry room, but I do want to mention that I have a blog post about the boundary method below. Um, I'll leave that link in the description box for you, specifically kind of lining up the benefits and how to do it. And I was just showing you how I do it, kind of a quick measure for the boys' clothes uh, after laundry day. That is my donate basket. It just sits up on the shelf in the laundry room. It probably already has some things in it. Yep. Regular decluttering this way, you know, it's, it's 15 minutes of my time to assess reverse declutter, deciding what to keep, and then figuring out what goes in the donate basket to drop off at various donation centers or to give away to friends with uh, children who are those sizes. It's a quick way to prioritize and organize stuff within a boundary, a shelf, a cube, a basket, a drawer, whatever it might be. The boundary method of decluttering could be considered a rule 
of decluttering or minimalism where you are confining items within a boundary. And when stuff goes outside that boundary, you got to do something about it. You got to declutter it, you got to relocate it, whatever it might be. And if the category is something you want to keep, but it's too big for the space that you've allotted, then you have to find a new space in your home and reorganize the entire category. So uh, I have recently talked about decluttering rules in these two videos here, part one and part two. I did not mention the boundary method inside those videos, but you'll find seven other rules, rules for decluttering that you might enjoy. Thanks for watching and spending part of your day with me today.